Dear Kate, our trip to Paducah for the American Quilter Society National Show and Contest was everything you said it would be, and more. How can I describe it? Fabulous, breathtaking, exquisite, educational, and fun. The members of my quilt guild and I drove all day in what we called our quilt caravan to make it to the show. The quilts we saw were fantastic. You were right. Paducah really is Quilt City, USA. From Paducah, Kentucky, Quilt City, USA, it's the 9th National American Quilter Society Quilt Show and Contest. There was so much to do at the AQS show. The vendor booths that line the exhibit halls are a quilter's paradise. The latest patterns, fabrics, and tools are all for sale. So many decisions. I felt as though I couldn't live without every single thing I saw. And of course I wanted to attend each and every one of the workshops and classes that were held at the convention center and the quilt museum. There was something for everyone, from beginners to advanced. Thank goodness for the AQS. Finally, we quilters are getting some long-deserved recognition for the passion in our lives. The awards banquet was a wonderful time to relax with other quilters and talk shop. The winners honored that night were truly deserving of their awards. If I work really hard, maybe I'll be up on that stage someday. One of the highlights of our visit was being on hand to witness the burying of a time capsule on the grounds of the Museum of the American Quilter Society. The capsule will be opened in 50 years. How thrilling to witness history in the making. The time capsule was filled with items related to quilting, as well as documents that will give future generations a glimpse of what life was like in Paducah in 1993. We have preserved for future generations a glimpse of what is happening today in the international quilting world, as well as in Paducah and the region of Western Kentucky. And this is a very special day for here, us here at Max, and I believe for quilting, because you know, uh, quilting is the connecting thread from the past, the present, and the future. And so it'll be exciting to see what is going to happen in the year 2043. And some of the interesting things that are in this uh, time capsule, we have videos from some of the middle schools. We have 80 quilting groups who have sent in their pins for their group and a list of their names so their children will know that they were involved. And uh, we have many few valuable things that when it's unearthed, we can have an auction and raise more money for the museum because we expect it will still be here. After the ceremony, we got our first look inside at the museum. Kate, the quilts there are truly works of art. We saw all the major winners from past AQS shows in the main gallery, and there were additional displays in the two other galleries in the museum. We could have stayed there all day, admiring the craftsmanship and artistry of these fantastic quilts. But we had to move on because there was so much more that we wanted to see and do. We women had better watch out. Men have discovered quilting. This year's best of show winner was Jonathan Shannon, who made one of the most joyous quilts I have ever seen. And he was such a charming man, sharing his love of quilting with those of us at the show. Well, I've always been very intrigued with airplanes of this period. I think that they're, they're fantastic designs. And I just thought that they would make a wonderful image for, for a quilt. And the, the challenge, of course, was, was creating a sense of reality with fabric so that it really would look like space and sky and airplanes flying around. This quilt took about seven months, and that was, it probably wasn't absolutely full-time quilt because I still do have a job, but it certainly was four or five hours every day and, and many days, 12 or 14 or 16 hours. So I begin with thumbnail sketches, and I get an overall feeling of what I'm going to do but I try not to, d to plan every decision in advance. Even when I'm, when I'm deciding on fabrics and things, I'm constantly auditioning no new fabrics and changing shapes and moving things around. Uh, this quilt went together very easily. In other quilts, I have taken them uh, completely apart and started all over again. Uh, 
these quilts take so long to do that if you know everything you're going to do before you begin, you've got seven months of sitting there just repeating stuff you already know. So I try to keep things uh, unplanned so that every day I have a little challenge that I can uh, overcome. The back of the quilt provides another opportunity to make a statement. And I like the idea that, that the back is used as a kind of a tagline. Uh, it, it, it's nice if it, if it can be a, a bit of a pun, something witty, something, something that makes it fun to look at. Uh, we, we get very serious sometimes about, about the surfaces of our quilt because they're so important to us. And it's wonderful if you can put a little joke on the back and, and just kind of say, well, I know this is serious, but it's, but it's also fun as well. And so the, the parachute just seemed a, an appropriate response for what these guys are doing later in the day. The really difficult decision was deciding to give up the quilt. That, that was really hard because when one has spent so much time and, and effort on a piece, it really becomes like a child. And it's just very hard to let it go. But I was really am so thrilled and honored to, be, to know that it will hang in the museum here that, that is, I guess, uh, I guess worth giving it up. And then I thought that, that if that award could go to something really meaningful, uh, for me being able to take classes with, with very skilled teachers has meant an enormous amount in, in my quilting uh, life. And I thought, well, if it could go for a scholarship fund that would help other quilters uh, particularly contemporary quilters who, who need to have those intensive four-day workshops with skilled quilt makers, that that would be some way that I could give back a little bit of the, of the wealth that I've received from quilt making. All of the other winners we met were equally willing to tell us about their quilts. This quilt was inspired by a number of antique quilts. It was um, only the, it's the first um, applique quilt I've ever made. Um, and so it was a real departure for me, basically because I usually only work in one or two colors and this happens to be multicolor and it is applique and, and I really like the design. The, the couple of quilts that I was inspired by um, had the same kind of block arrangement and it had the same writing as this does, only different words but in the same location. I really like the set of the quilt and so um, I used that as a basis for it and then designed this one myself to, to kind of have that same feeling. Well, it took about six months, which is a really long time for me. I usually do them in about three months. Um, I had to begin by appliquing all the blocks independently and then sew them all together and then do the quilting and then the trapuntoing and then finish off with the binding. Trapunto is all these spaces that have extra filling in them that gives dimension to the quilt. And in this case, the appliques are also trapuntoed. I just never imagined winning so much money. I, I, it, I haven't comprehended it yet. My husband and I both love Art Nouveau designs. So um, we had a book of Dover Art Nouveau illustrations and we were flipping through them and I found four illustrations that were very appealing to me. They were in black and white and I thought that it would be fun to kind of enlarge those illustrations and uh, they were the four panels that are on the quilt. And uh, I did that, I didn't know, I mean, I was trying to use softer colors than most of the colors that I've used in my other quilts. I've used um, a lot stronger colors in my other quilts. And um, after I finished applicating the panels, I really didn't know how to put the quilt together. I wanted to um, put it together in a way that would still be in keeping with the Art Nouveau feeling. So I drew the sashes and then I drew out the border. It took a year and a half. All of the quilting is by hand on this quilt. It took me about four and a half months to make. Um, and basically it's a study. I started with a face and I wanted to do a study. Uh, last year I had tried to, to do a face with, a, with an eagle in the background, real distant, real. Um, and the harder I worked on that eagle, the clearer it came. Did the ap, you know, absolute opposite. So this mainly is a study of the faces and how I could um, uh, work with um, imaging and getting the, the distance and, and still create a, a feeling. It, it, was, it was more of a study. This actually started out as a little thumbnail sketch of a real pelican. 
and then I just sort of developed the sketch over a two-year period, kind of played with it. And he just sort of developed a life of his own and got sort of carried away with himself. So he really is only a pelican, but he thinks that he's a cross between a peacock and a phoenix, and he's really quite full of himself. And he hasn't quite noticed that he has very large feet. <laughs> The quilt I have upstairs, well, it's actually an illusion of over overlapping transparent triangles. And you can't exactly tell where one triangle left leaves off and the other begins. And I, I kind of like the illusion of confusion, sort of. And so it's been kind of fun playing with. This is a new series. I've only done five quilts in this series now. And this is actually the second. Um, and it's also the largest. My quilt is done uh, using metallic and rayon threads and a stitching technique to make ribbons on the surface of the quilt so that it's translucent but you can still see the um, fabric that is the base behind these ribbons as well as the stitched part. <laughs> so. And it's a new technique as far as I know. It's a machine embroidery technique. But the first quilt I ever did it on, uh, the first show, two ladies came and just stared at this piece and a friend of mine was watching the quilts, and as they turned to leave, one looked at the other and said, you're right, Ethel, that's just got to be hair. <laughs> so, I'm waiting for someone to call and want to know how I make my hair quilts. The most unique events we attended was the fashion show. What a delight. So colorful, so fun, so one of a kind. The eye-catching designs included a number of definite head turns. What a great way to tell the world, I'm a quilter. I got the back of the back of the panel for the Queen of Hearts garment that I made. It was given to me from a friend in my guild, and it's about a 25-year-old piece of Afghanistan embroidery. And I didn't know what to do with it for the longest time. And I was sitting and exercising one day and saw the Queen of Hearts uh, beach towel in a catalog. And I thought, gee, those colors, the black and the red and the yellow and the white, reminded me of this piece and I thought well perhaps that's what I could do with it and that's what started me thinking about a garment with the Queen of Hearts. Okay. I was trying to figure out what else I would do on the on the front of the garment so I made playing cards by uh, fusing uh, fabric uh, to interfacing and then I machine embroidered around the outside with just a little cross stitch and then my machine embroidered the, the, the cues and I have quite a large collection of hearts and I decided to embellish it with the hearts. Uh, after I got the garment practically finished, originally the braid was not on the garment and it just looked very flat, very dead and I went back with the lining and still hand sewed all of the braid onto the garment. 
Quilted fashions are not limited to women, it's for men too. AQS co-founder Bill Schrader and his friend Ray Scott held a quilted vest competition. A number of the vests were done in a fishing motif, which was certainly appropriate since both Bill and Ray are avid fishermen. The AQS show lasted four days, but as far as I'm concerned, it could have lasted 400 from enjoying the charm and beauty of Paducah to taking in all the activities associated with the AQS show, my trip was one that I will always cherish. I'm definitely coming back, and I sincerely hope to see you at the AQS show next year. Until then, happy quilting.